Right. On the phones all day. On the phones all day, getting a lot of getting a lot of mail, and uh, a lot of the, a lot of the mail you can't handle right away. My secretary uh, couldn't handle a lot of the things that that I did. I needed to make decisions on some of the questions I was getting, uh, and also I needed to I needed to be signing contracts. I needed to be doing reports. So on the phone most of the time with either my account managers from different places or customers from different places, but. That's, that's the way the day was. And at 6 o'clock when, when I left the office, without a phone, it was like a vacation. That's why I, I don't have a cell phone now because <laughs> it was like a vacation coming out of the office without the phone in my ear. Mm -hmm. how, much, um, how much did RCA influence the growth of Camden? It influenced the growth of Camden quite, quite a bit, really. When I, when I was growing up, I grew up in East Camden, went to Woodrow Wilson High School. Okay. We played Camden all the time. I think we beat them once. <laughs> but uh, actually, uh, a lot of a lot of people a lot of people in Camden worked at RCA, and when they had government contracts, work was fine. As soon as they finished government contracts, they would lay off people. And when I grew up, that's that's what I that's what I knew about RCA. They hired, they fired, they hired, they fired. So I was a little, a little apprehensive about. Going to work for RCA, but knowing it wasn't government government work, I, I felt a little more comfortable, really. Mm -hmm. So outside of RCA, did what did you do for fun? I actually uh, for uh, I, I I played uh, I played softball, I played volleyball, uh, and I was active in the Haddonfield Wise Men's Club. Uh, I've been I've been involved in the American Legion for many years. Uh, I'm a county officer, I've been a state officer. So uh, I've been able to keep busy, really. Uh, um, what school did you go went to? Went to Woodrow Wilson High School. After, and uh, at, at, the time, at the time when I was growing up, if you could afford to go to college, you went to Camden High School because they had languages. Mm -hmm. And it was a four, it was a four, you went to 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. If you were going to work after, after high school, you went to Woodrow Wilson. My family wasn't wealthy, so I, I planned on going to work after high school. And they had commercial and trades. And I took commercial, which was shorthand, typing, bookkeeping. And if you took trades, you took printing, automotive, and woodwork. Mm -hmm. And when I came out of when I came out of high school, I, I could work at any office. In fact, I came out of high school at 17, and I worked for a real estate broker in Camden. He's gone now, but I was, I was the office boy, and uh, uh, what I would do on Saturday, I, I would do typing during the week, typing uh, specifications for the homes that they were building, things like that. And on Saturday, I would collect rent from 9 o'clock until 1 o'clock throughout Camden. And uh, during the year, the office manager asked me if I could reconstruct their building business for which they weren't keeping books for two years. So I, I, I said, do you have canceled checks? Do you have invoices? Do you have bank statements? And they had them all. So I reconstructed their business that they were in for two years so that they could have general, general uh, uh, journals, general ledgers, profit and loss statements. And that's what I got out of the high school. The high school had a very good, very good commercial mm -hmm. course. And afterwards, I went to, uh, I went to a, a, a business school when I, after I graduated uh, for shorthand typing to become more proficient. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Pierce Business School uh, afterwards, uh, actually uh, under the GI Bill. Went to Rutgers for a couple of years, uh, but uh, and uh, Rutgers I took a three-year course in industrial management, which covered everything that. I later, I later uh, did work uh, for industrial management, personnel, marketing, uh, quality, uh, quality control. So I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the education I had and what I did. Mm -hmm. So at RCA, what did you do for fun? Well, we had various programs. Uh, we had we had softball, and we had the volleyball, and uh, basically uh, that was it. Mm -hmm. I, that's a part of most everything. Mm -hmm. How long did you work at RCA? 32 years.
Why did you leave? Retired. My, uh, actually, uh, when, when, when I left, my group, uh, when I left, GE had purchased RCA. Mm -hmm. And uh, my group was being moved to Atlanta. So I retired in 62 because I didn't want to go to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's basically the deal. Can you describe how you felt when RCA closed? Sadness. RCA, the RCA that I knew was a paternalistic for, uh, uh, organization. In other words, when, when anybody needed anything, uh, for instance, uh, uh, I spent most of my time in home office. Mm -hmm. And in home office, you have, you have uh, uh, local, local uh, offices throughout the country. You have uh, offices in New York, Philadelphia, Dallas, Atlanta, Los Angeles, and a lot of those, a lot of those people are technicians that come up and they're, they've been made into supervisors. Then the supervisor has moved into a management position. But I, I found that a lot of a lot of technicians that move into management positions are not too strong administratively. And I was able, I was able to, I was able to breach that uh, that difference from my experience working before I came to RCA, working at the, the TV branch, so that, and working in the office as the accounting guy, and I knew how RCA uh, accounting worked. So when, when people from the field offices would call me and needed help, I was helping. I was, in other words, GE would not, would not do that extra part of the work. We were, that's why I say, we were more paternalistic uh, than everybody that worked with, with RCA. What did you enjoy about working at RCA? People, the people I worked with, really. It, uh, and uh, getting to know, getting to know the people in the other organizations that I work with. Most of the people I work with were top flight, uh, top flight managers, and uh, never had any problem with them, really. Did you own a phonogram? A phonogram? I had, uh, I had uh, various phonograms, really. A forty-five RPM and. Uh, I had the old 78 RPMs. Uh, everything that came along, I had, really. You still have them? No, no, they're going with the wind. <laughs> so, um, what kind of changes were made over the years you were at RCA? Well, there, there, was, there was quite a few changes uh, with, with equipment uh, changes and also, uh, I mean, there, when when I when I was a national coordinator for replacement parts, and when we made uh, when we made the procedures uh, and distributed procedures, we did them on a ditto machine. And uh, of course, as you go along, the copy machine did away with uh, the need for the ditto machine, uh, and the same way with the same way with uh, facsimile. facsimile. Uh, RCA service had contracts service contracts for the first facsimiles. In the, in the country. And uh, then along comes uh, the internet and everything else. So all those changes came along. Uh, we, uh, uh, when the, we went into uh, computers, then we got into programming, then we got into uh, hotel management. There's a lot of things that uh, changed as we went along that we had no idea that we were going to get, get into uh, 20 years earlier. Mm -hmm. Did you how different does Camden look than back in the day? Big difference. I mean, when, when uh, actually, uh, when I would come down to Camden uh, from Cherry Hill, we had a multitude of buildings there that you could go into. Uh, I would go into one building for mobile communications, talk to the order service people. I would go into another, another, business, another building for broadcast equipment, talk to different people. And I would go into the, the general office building and talk to the top management. Uh, I mean, it was, it was a whole city within a city down there. Mm -hmm. um, well, thank you so much for coming today.